Managing Manchester United in FC24 has not been easy. Even after making signings like Rodrigo and Frankie de Jong, we just conceived the most ridiculous goals. To make it worse, Manchester derby, we got absolutely humbled. Frustrating, that's all I'm gonna say. Manchester City just put us in our place. We're now 10th in the Premier League, which is simply unacceptable for a club like United. And if we don't do something to move up the table, soon we might be getting an angry email from the board, which we do not want. Okay, guys, we don't have to be worried about getting sacked or anything because I have found the problem in this team. Yep, it's that striker position. It pains me to say this, but Rasmus, at this point of time in his career, is not there yet. Don't get me wrong, he does score goals, but he also wastes a ton of chances. What I'm thinking is if we can sign an experienced striker, maybe someone who we can rotate with Rasmus because there's plenty of games throughout the season, that's going to be the play. I'm willing to even sell and transfer this Martial to pull that off. We got the money even to sign a striker in his prime. But don't forget, we're still 64 days away from the transfer window. We still need to get through a lot of football. Once we're in January, though, it is time to bring in a striker. Before that, though, October 30th is coming, and you might be thinking, what's on October 30th? Well, it's the Ballon d'Or ceremony. Are we going to get an invite? Um, no cutscene played, so I think no. Let's check. Okay, the Ballon d'Or winners have been announced. Young Player of the Year award. That's now in the game. That's crazy. And it's who? A Fulham player? How is it not Musiala or someone? Angel Alarcon. I've never heard of this guy. And he's just won the Young Player of the Year award. This kid's a striker, 19 years old. I'm going to scout him to see what's up. But the more important thing is the Ballon d'Or. And it's, of course, Erling Holland who's won it. He's the cover star, man. EA were never going to let anyone else win it. But why on earth are we worried about the Ballon d'Or? None of our players deserve to win it. And we're dent in the Premier League. We've got bigger fish to fry. We need to move up the table. We still have pretty much two months before we make it to January and can improve the team. But I do not want any excuses in these two months. We need to try and make it to at least the top five. I think that's a fair goal. Let's try and push for the top five until we're in January. Our first game is the Craven Cottage against Fulham. Rashford looking for Rasmus. Rasmus? That is brilliantly nope. done, but then the finish. Bruno Fernandes looking for Frankie de Jong who's burst through. This is looking brilliant. Frankie, but he's taken it too wide. Plays it back in for Rasmus. Let's go. Hoyland scores. Come on. Let's go, guys. That one opportunistic goal from Rasmus got us the win. Okay, guys, you know what? Maybe I've been a bit too harsh on Rasmus. He's a 20-year-old kid, and he still scored five goals in 15 games. Tell you what, if he can somehow score 12 goals until we get to January, I will not sign a new striker. Only if he does that. So, let's keep a track of how many goals he gets. He's already he scored once. Just 11 more to go because then I'll be convinced that I want to keep him as my number one striker. Next up, we got Champions League action and this group is looking spicy, so we better win. But Champions League, I kind of want to give Garnacho a bit of game time, so he's starting. We'll also play Mason Mount and even Todibo. Rasmus finding space. He now knows he's playing for a spot in the team and he's making the most of it. What a goal from Rasmus Hoyland. That is one hell of a finish. Goal number two for Rasmus. Suddenly, he started to score in every single game. Defensively, it's been tough. And no, Onana was not keeping that one out. Is that Dries Mertens? I think it is. Yo, Dries Mertens is playing for Galatasaray. No wonder that finish was so freaking good. Mertens is a baller. Oh, that's a problem. That's a problem. And we concede again. Usually in the Champions League, we've not been this bad. But this game, it's been different. Oh my God, we could concede a third year. What? Mertens is just unstoppable. And Onana, for the first time, is having a very sus game. We're making a few changes, guys. Good. Nacho has had a bit of a shocker. We need Bruno in the team because Mount is awful. At the back, I probably need the experience of Run. All the youngsters that we played, we're getting them out right now. We need to turn things around here. Bruno Fernandez. Rasmus again. Rasmus again. That's goal number three for him now in this episode itself. Rasmus Hoyland gets us back in the game. Rasmus. Oh, the hold up play there was nice. Bruno Fernandez finding space and he's taking advantage of it. 90th minute. We're at least getting a point out of this. Let's 
freaking goal. A last minute comeback goal? This reminded me of Fergie time. Wasn't the best of performances, but we'll take the draw. That draw was actually crucial because it keeps us second in the group. And it still keeps us unbeaten. By the way, remember Angel Alcorcon? The guy who won the Young Player of the Year award? A final report on him has come and he's 68 rated. What got him to win the Young Player of the Year award? I don't get it. What a robbery. It should have been someone like Bellingham, Gavi. Of course, Musiala is a big one. I find this really weird. But anyways, guys, I was reading through your comments and there were so many people telling me to fix the kit numbers in our players. For example, Alejandro Garnacho now wears the number 17 and then we can give Frankie De Jong number 21, which is the kit number he normally wears. I think, yeah, rest of the kit numbers are fine at the club. We're making it through this game against Luton Down, which we do end up winning. Rodrigo scoring a brace. Let's go. Oh, we only just put Anthony Martial on the transfer list and already we've got offers coming in for him. 21.5 million from Sevilla. I think I'm going to accept it. It's a good offer. We're looking to sell him. Anyways, I kind of want to sign a striker to compete with Rasmus. Now, it depends if Rasmus can ball out. Then we might not. But I think selling Martial because he's really bad. I'm sorry, guys. Martial didn't make it here. We're accepting this offer. Oh, look at that. I think a five-star coach is finally now available. Look at that. We can sign him up. But free up some coach slots before hiring new coaches. Oh, no. We need to, I think, sack one of our coaches before we can hire a proper world-class coach. I don't want to be doing this, but I guess, Thompson, we're going to have to sack you. Wait, I just tried sacking him, and now the game has crashed. Look, guys, I'm, I'm moving the analog stick. Nothing's happening. Oh, is this a bug? Guys, we just literally restarted FIFA. Okay, so the coaches we have, we can't sack them. Somehow, they've just got complete immunity because of this glitch. But I'm sure EA will fix this bug very soon. The game hasn't officially launched, so yeah, it will be fixed. Wait a minute, why on earth is Anthony Martial not agreeing to move to Sevilla? Well, I guess we're going to have to wait for another offer to come for him. Meanwhile, we're slowly moving up the Premier League table. Two wins on the trot. Let's keep that going. Oh, long ball for Marcus Rashford. Oh, what a first touch that was. Looks inside for Rasmus. We might be able to do something here. Ah, oh, we put it wide. The Everton defense has not been easy to break down at all. But here we've got Bruno Fernandes. Sees Marcus Rashford in a great spot. Good first touch. Rasmus in the box. And what a goal from United. That was world class. Not just from Rasmus, but from Bruno and Rashford in the build-up play. That's goal number four for Rasmus in this episode. And once again, a 1-0 win. We're sneakily pulling through games and getting results. Three wins in a row in the Premier League. We've needed that. It feels good guys finally it seems like we're closing the gap between the other teams in the premier league i know we're still seventh but would you believe it we're only three points off the top of the league the premier league is ridiculously close turning our attentions to the champions league now because we've got Bayern, and this next game is going to decide whether we finish top of the group or basically second by the way guys rasmus is doing literally everything to be a starter at this club four goals already up to a 79 overall this is insane but i don't know if rasmus Rasmus can get the job done against this Bayern team. They will be out for revenge because we beat them last time. Do you know what? For this game, if we try doing a training session, that could give like a playstyle plus to some of our players. Yo, if we complete this crossing drill before the Bayern game, we'll have Luke Shaw, Casemiro, Rodrigo, Rashford and Bruno all getting temporary playstyle pluses. Yeah, this is perfect. Let's try and complete it though. This might be a lot harder than expected, but let's see. Bruno putting the ball in. Rashford. Okay. I can do this. The training drill was difficult, but we somehow got through it. One-off signature ability skin. For the first time, we're going to have play styles that are super OP on our players. This is the new feature of FC24. I should be doing this more often, especially for big games. Off we go now. The serious business begins. Time to face Bayern Munich, and we're going for the win. Harry Kane, we're not going to let you win this one. No, no, no. Oh, Musiala threw on goal already. There's no way we're catching up to him, but what's he done there? We survived that somehow. Guys, Bayern Munich are out for revenge. Just look at them. What have we done defensively there? We just moved away from Harry Kane, and we've let him score against us. Rodrigo down the touchline, putting it back in for Rashford. Simple header, and we're back in this game. For some reason, guys, against Bayern Munich, Rashford loves to score. Rodrigo looking for Rashford at the back post. Oh, come on. How is Neuer saving that? Oh, it's not even Neuer in goal. I think it's someone else. Yep, it's Ulrich. No wonder we scored so easily. Back for Bruno. 
in a bit of open space. He's now got the power shot trade. And I'm thinking, let's let him fly. Oh, 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 that was a rocket. No, no, we've let Harry Kane through again. And oh, oh, how did we not concede that? I have no idea. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Rasmus. No way. Against nope. Bayern. Oh, Rashford rebound. Let's go. I told you, there's something about Rashford and Bayern Munich. He just loves scoring against him. No, no, no. We just gifted Kane the equalizer. Come on, the game's not done yet. There's enough time for Marcus Rashford to possibly get the match no. ball. Why? Why use your left foot there? Just finesse it with your right. Leroy Sane now looking inside, and there's the goal. 3 2 Bayern Munich. We had the chance with Rashford. Didn't take it. Bayern scored. Bayern now are sadly in full control, man. They're going to get another one. It's a Harry Kane hat trick. This is depressing. Ah, there goes any chance of us finishing first in the group. Honestly, that game against Bayern kind of just reinforced in my mind that we need a new striker. I know Rasmus has scored four goals so far in this episode. He can definitely score more. But you saw the difference of having a player like Harry Kane. That's the kind of striker we need. Anyways, focus is back on the Premier League. Let's just get back to winning ways. Also, guys, it is my dream to hit 1 million subscribers before 2024, and you guys can help me out by subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. We're up against Newcastle next. This is gonna be challenging. Oh, and once again, Varane's fitness is super stinky after a big game. Same with Rasmus, and you know what? For this game, then, I'ma try playing Rashford at striker and Gonacho at left wing. Let's see how that works. I'll tell you this, guys. Todibo has been a tremendous signing. Varane does not have the stamina to play every single game of the season and that's why bringing in Todibo absolutely massive here's Gonacho now with his new number 17 he's gone through can he score oh my goodness that is brilliant from Alejandro Gonacho what a goal you guys were absolutely right man Gonacho is something special his change of pace and everything it's fantastic and he almost just assisted there once again, defense, um, Onana. That was more like Onana in real life. What was that? What are we doing at the back here? It's just shocking defending and what? Newcastle, how have they scored that? Guys, we need to make changes, man. It's it's clearly not working. Rashford at striker, this is not it. If, if ever there was a moment I thought we need a new striker, it's this, man. It's just not working, whatever we're trying to do. Anyways, I'm bringing on Rasmus right now and hopefully he can help us get back into this game. <laughs> No way, guys. That was not a penalty. I know I went sliding in, but I got the ball. Okay, I maybe took out the man as well. Penalty. If they score, it could be all over for us. And of course, Onana dives the right way, but is he blind? You, you gotta at least reach out for the ball. We face a serious team and we end up getting slapped around. That's been the story of our Premier League season. And would you believe it? We face Chelsea next. Guys, there's something clearly wrong with our team. And I'm now thinking maybe it's time to go back to the drawing board. Maybe this wing play tactical vision it's just not clicking because defensively i feel like an idiot in every game maybe it's time for me to change our tactical vision i know it could end up costing us a fair bit like look at the boosts that go down on our players but i think it's worth changing it take in pressing at the liverpool method jürgen Klopp's method i think i want to nab his play style with this style our players are gonna press like mad men and i think that's what we need to win the ball quickly go on the attack i think this is it we'll try this out and see how it works of course it would have been really helpful if we could um sack some coaches and bring in others but for now that's kind of bugged out i'm also making the necessary changes for instructions on our players and now we're going to test it out against this chelsea team who are playing a standard tactical vision some stem up they've not figured their approach out at all time to test out a new tactical vision and see if on the pitch it makes us better no we're not off to a good start as we concede ah, to be fair we're trying out new tactics it's gonna take time but this is embarrassing rodrigo this is looking really promising tough angle and he somehow slides and scores no idea how he's pulled that off but we get the equalizer chelsea and kuku on it what 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 from there he actually pulled that off i can't believe it onana what are you doing up until this episode onana has been virtually spotless 
but now suddenly, he just can't seem to make a save to save his life. But Rasmus could really save us from a dire situation, and that's exactly what he's done. In the eighth minute, Rasmus gets his goal number five. That is huge for us. First game with our new tactical vision, and it's gone okay. I would have loved to win, but I think we can build on this. Okay, this is good. Looks like our new tactical vision is working as we beat Bournemouth 3-1. What I'm thinking is, with this new style of play that we've got, extreme high press, a new striker could really be game-changing. Can you imagine someone like Victor Ossiman, who's like 89 rated? Oh, Lautaro Martinez actually would be perfect for the role. He is that guy who runs, who presses. This could be it. Of course, slowly but surely, Rasmus is still scoring goals. I'm not counting him out, but I think we're nearing a point where we need to sign a striker. Wait, what? In other news, Anthony Martial just signed a deal with Real Sociedad on a pre-contract. Guys, I was trying to sell him all this while. He just left and there's still time for the window to open. I know his contract was expiring. I didn't even know that was in the game. Before the window opens, you can actually get pre-contract signings done. That is unreal. Do you know what? We have so many players whose contracts are expiring like Lindelof. I would definitely be interested in renewing his deal. He does not want an extension. At least one Bissaka. I think he'll be in interested to re-sign with us. There you go. We're protected from losing him at least. But that's a big surprise. Martial is gone. That now makes getting a new striker even more important. Meanwhile, we managed to wrap up the Champions League group stages with a win. And with that, the Champions League group stages have been wrapped up. We are going to be in the round of 16 in the knockouts, but there's a high chance we're going to get a really difficult draw. We'll worry about it then. We now have a trip to Anfield, and this is going to be tough. We know it. Our tactical vision here is going to be tested to the limits because we are playing against Liverpool, who are the masters of the Gegen Press. Oh my god, Salah! No, no, no! A bicycle kick goal from him. I just don't know what Onana is doing, to be honest. Oh, Rasmus Holland. He's broken through. A goal back now would be huge, and that's what you get when you have a top-class keeper. Allison, brilliant, but Rashford. Oh, no, he couldn't score. They're going to score another one, aren't they? We can't beat the Masters at their play style. We absolutely can't. Do you know what? The more I play, I realize we're just not made for the Gegen pressing style. I just don't think we are, because our players just do not have the legs, the energy to press like Liverpool. We are second to every ball. I think I've made a tactical error, a massive managerial tactical error. This is not a play style we can sustain. At least Rasmus is trying everything to just simply get this team back into the game on his own. That's another goal for Rasmus. Goal number six for him, but it's not really going to do us any good, is it? Liverpool are relentless. Mo Salah with the header. We just can't compete against this. Full time, and I think we've got to go back to the drawing board because I do not want to see Jurgen Klopp celebrating like this. Ah, we tried something new for a while. Didn't work. I'm, I'm actually going back to the wing play plan. All our coaches are experts in that. We get the biggest boost. For now, we'll keep that. And let's just hope we can just get to January with some wins. We have three games before the January transfer window. West Ham, Villa, and Nottingham. I want to win all three of them. Oh, first chance already for us is Marcus Rashford's through. He's got to make the most of it. And he does. We need a bit of this. We need a bit of this. Only a 1-0 win, but we'll take it, boys. At this point, we'll take any kind of wins. Let's go, guys. We get a penalty chance to take the lead against that. Aston Villa. This might be my first penalty in FC 24. And it's Bruno Fernandes with his iconic pop, skip, and jump style. 1-0. We needed that. No, 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 no. And we can see it offside. I'm sure that was offside. Wait, what? It literally popped on the screen offside. No, he's celebrating. Ah, oh, that controversial goal gets Aston Villa a draw. But thankfully, we at least pick up a win against Nottingham Forest. Hoyland scores more goals. Two in this one. He now has 12 goals in total. Eight big basically in this episode, but that's clearly not enough. 12 was the target I set, and that does mean we are going to look to bring in a striker. I think it's obvious, it's inevitable, we need someone to lead this team. Because guys, look at this, almost half a season, we're sixth in the Premier League. We, we can't be doing this, man. We really can't. But the transfer window is finally open. Victor Osimhen, maybe Lautaro Martinez, or someone else. Who is going to be Manchester United star number nine? Well, next episode, we're going to have to to make the big decision. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy this one as well. Click here to watch that.